this thing, it says, it's it's like a plaque. I don't know if this is real or what, but it says, Jacob von Hogflum, 1864 to 1909, inventor of time travel, lived here in 2063. He will have been missed. What in the world? <laughs> That's like the John. That's like the John Doe th- theory. Yeah. My God. <laughs> Insane. Anyway, I just thought that was funny. He will have been missed. He will have been missed. You see, wordplay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's something that uh, is kind of a lost art, but when it is done right, it is very, 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 very good. So, are we ready to dive into the vortex? I'm ready to dive into the vortex, always. <laughs> always ready to dive into the vortex. How's that different from any other recording? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the General Geekery Podcast. The podcast where we love to geek out about all that we love to geek out about with no remorse, no regrets, and with all of the enthusiasm in the world! Woo! And... With a heavy heart, I do have to say this is going to be the last time that we record in this re- certain this particular recording space. Oh yeah, that's right. I knew that already. Yeah, I'm... I had a moment where I was like, "What?" No, <laughs> no, no, no. We're good. Like, no, this podcast is still continuing, but there's like, this is this is the last this is the last recording of uh, this current recording studio because yeah. uh, I'm moving and uh... it's gonna be a new place. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. 10 out of 10 on that. I didn't want to interrupt that. Thank you. Thank you. As always, this is Donald Kaczynski, your resident coffee ninja by day, actor, gamer, streamer by night. And joining me, as always, you know her, you love her. She is the dice slinger extraordinaire, artiste magnificent, and uh, a fantastic singer, I gotta say. It's Anna Kubiak, ladies and gentlemen. What? What? <laughs> All right, we've got a we got a fun we got a fun topic today. Hannah, you wanna you wanna lead us in on this journey? I do, I do. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about today is a topic that has people have been interested in it for a long time, over many times in spaces, time and space, and uh, wibbly, wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, it just fascinates people. If you could go back, would you? Mm. If you could go forward, where would you go? Yes. If you could stay here, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was supposed to mean. We're talking about time travel, everybody. Yes. Different kinds of time travel, examples of time travel. Where did the idea of time travel come from? Um... As always, I will try to cite my sources and give credit where credit is due because I did not think of any of this stuff. I did not think of the categories of different kinds of time travel or anything like that. My first source is called tvtropes.org, which is, I just typed in tropes of time, like time travel tropes. Oh, yeah. Try saying that ten times fast. Time travel tropes, 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 time travel tropes. Did you say it eleven times or was I just miscounting? Uh I think I was probably one behind. Oh, okay. We'll just call it a win. Cheers. Cheers. I don't have a coffee cup at the moment, so I'm just using a um uh still sealed up uh coffee liqueur bottle. Did we clink clink in the last episode or did I just No, we clink clinked. We're good. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> okay. Things get away. I'm pretty almost. sure. I'm pretty sure that I said time travel tropes at some point during there, but you yeah, were no, saying we, it too, so no one. Knows. We were close. Okay. Anyway, um, the idea of time travel. I read something that says that the inspiration for 99 percent of the use of this concept um, is derived from a single work. And what do you think that that is, Donald? So the use of this is derived from a the, single... The idea of time travel nowadays, hmm. uses of this concept derive their inspiration from, 99% of their inspiration from this. I don't know. I will give you a hint. Okay. It has to do with time travel. <laughs> Boy, that narrows it down. <laughs> 
This guy also wrote about um an, about a Mars invasion, I believe. Um. It rings a bell, but I don't know. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. That... Would you like to go back in time and know what the answer is? Absolutely. Vamanos to the DeLorean. <laughs> you made a time machine out of a DeLorean? Well, I figured if you're going to go back in time, why not do it in style? All right. So, the time machine, written in um, 1895. Uh, it's there's it's about this guy who the thing that I remember because I read this when I was a kid and it terrified me was this guy builds a time machine and he goes back to AD 802,701 and finds a future populated by the Eloi who are peaceful and childlike and the Morlocks who are bestial and predatory and with this Wells is suggesting that this sort of uh, like polarization of the peaceful and childlike and the bestial and predatory, the Eloi and the Morlocks, is a result of class struggle. Um, and I quote from TV Tropes, the parasitic rich have degenerated into the effete Eloi while the working class, treated like beasts, have become just that. So he was making, um, I think I think H.G. Wells was was um, not so subtly sort of pushing his, uh, his, his socialist ideas there. Um, Would not surprise me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so sort of like if we have different, different class structures and stuff, those class structures will become even more, uh, uh, dis disparate? Divided? Divided. We'll become even more divided, even more polarized, and even more different. So we should make sure that everybody just stays in the middle, because then it'll, there will be peace, you know. But I mean, that's another extreme that we can talk about some other day. Extremities, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like where everybody is the same. Um, yeah. So um, that's where it comes from. And uh, here's another thing of from TV tropes. Of all the concepts in speculative fiction, time travel is probably the one that, over time, has provided us with the most possibilities for storytelling and therefore the one that has been exploited the most. Whether you're casting a critical eye on the past, satirizing the present through a warped future, or just looking for an excuse to have dinosaurs rampaging through New York, time travel is the way to go, or possibly the way to have been going. It's so hard to tell these days, or those days, or whatever, or whenever. We tend to get grammatically confused when talking on this subject. That's true. Yep, yep. I do get confused when talking on this subject. Descriptive words kind of lose and gain more meaning as the more we talk about time travel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tenses are almost non-existent. Yep, yep. Everything is happening at the same time. If you are not, if you're not in a particular point in time. To quote David Tennant again, "Wibbly wobbly, mm -hmm. timey wimey." Yep, yep. If you can be any, if you can be any when, are you really any when at all? I have so many questions! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, in my research, I found quirkbooks.com um, about three types of time travel stories. And the three types of time travel stories that you can divide them into is, um, it relies on this question. Can the character change nothing, some things, or everything? And this sort of determines what kind of rules of time travel you're operating under in this particular story. So, the first one is called Single Continuum. Characters can change nothing. They merely help bring about the events that have already happened. So, um, what I think we could do is sort of try and think of some examples in fiction of these different kinds of time travel. I was thinking along the lines of the same thing. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So we can we can discuss sort of so, what we think it is. Like the example that this writer gave in Quirk Books was the whole the time turner incident in Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh yeah. Where using the time turner didn't change anything. It just caused what had always always happened. Buckbeak didn't die. The Dementors were scared off by a Patronus, and Sirius escaped. So it it uh, the single continuum 
basically just traveling in time changes our perception of events rather than the events themselves. But there, there was also um, multiple um, examples of, of that, especially in like Doctor Who. Doctor Who. First yeah. one, first one that springs to mind was the David Tennant episode where uh, they visited Pompeii. Oh, you know what? That's an example of another one that we'll get to in a moment. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah. That's very, that's very true. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, basically, like, um, things don't ha- um, mm-hmm. ha- happen as they happen. Um, yeah. There are several things like that in, Re- in Doctor Who where that's mm-hmm. basically, that that happens as well. Yeah. Well, you kind of, you, no matter what you do, things always end up to be the same. And mm-hmm. actually, to a certain extent as well with that, um, going back to a previous episode, Steins Gate. I was going to say Steins Gate also, yeah. Cause... Be- because, because, like, even though... The one constant was every single time. Mm-hmm. But also Steinsgate deals with, like, every single version of time travel, so... It does, actually, yeah, because he he goes back and he actually changes how things are, and that causes a different reality to spring forth, but, but he also, ultimately, I think that, ultimately, he sort of, sort of figures out how to make the single continuum work because he'll he'll always that that event where he saw what's her name Kudusu yep he saw her die and that's never going to change right like the world doesn't the world start to disintegrate or something because oh no 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 um what's her name Mayuri Mayuri yeah so in order to save her he had to undo all of the changes he made in time and that meant that um, that meant that, that, Kur- that Kurisu Kur- had to die. That Kurisu had to die because that was the event that caused him to t- t- travel in time. Yep that that's what that's what that's when the world line concept like uh, yeah. was explored. Yeah, to get back to the original timeline where she died, that was what he had to do. Um, and so, kind of, yeah, the way that that worked out was that he didn't have to get her killed. He just had to create a situation in which himself from the past thought that she had died which led him to the uh sort of big time loop that he had to do or have to cause his past self to do and go through because he had already gone through it to get to where he was like (laughs) (laughs) yeah time travel don't y'all love it yeah but no i i i love that ending where it's like wait a minute I don't have to... She doesn't have to actually die. Just me in the past has to think that she did. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's... the. Th- there's sort of a theme in uh, single continuum uh, time travel stories where there are themes of inevitability, like catharsis and satisfaction. Sort of like the, oh, I get it. Where you don't have to change things. You just have to figure out how they can stay the same and yield the result that you want. The Avengers Endgame way. The Avengers Endgame, yeah. Got it. Yeah. That was one that I had, I had written it down, and I was like, let's talk about maybe what kind of time travel this is. But yeah, Avengers Endgame, basically. Yeah, because they were taking stuff out with every intention to place it back, like back in Mm -hmm. the time stream once Mm -hmm. they did that. So that is basically utilizing to your own end. Yeah, if you go back in time and get something from back in time and use it in the future and then put it back, you're not really changing anything. hmm Yeah. You exactly. want to keep everything the same. So you can't change the past, but you can use the past to influence the future. Right. Yeah. Woo! Yikes. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly. Wibbly wobbly. But yeah, I think that that's really cool because this is probably the most clean cut kind of time travel because you don't have to think about all of those paradoxes like oh my gosh if I do this then I will cease to exist and then how would I go back in time to make myself cease to exist if I didn't exist it's like (laughs) that's some serious back to the future (laughs) yeah yeah like how yeah then then if you didn't exist you would get married and why does everything smell like copper (laughs) yeah Thank you, thank okay. you, TFS. Here's the one that where Doctor Who comes in. Oh, here we um, go. Uh, time travel type number two. Fixed points. Characters can change some things. 
So it's a Doctor Who thing. There's a quote from the Pompeii episode. Pompeii is a fixed point in history. What happens, happens. There's no stopping it. But the thing about that is, in those kind of time travel um, incidents, it sort of feels like you're trapped because it's something inevitably is going to happen. Yes. There's that same theme of inevitability, like from the single continuum type, but the inevitability is a little bit more... It's a little bit more fluid. Like, you're dealing with big things, but you can change the details. Like, in the, in the fires of Pompeii, they couldn't save Pompeii, but they did go back and save a family. Yeah. Sort of like... They, was, they saved Peter Capaldi. I'm so yep, happy. Yep. It was... It was... I really enjoyed that part of the episode as well, because there, it was sort of this... What the fixed points... Uh, type of time travel story does is it has themes of hope for humanity despite inevitability and despair. So, you know, the doctor gets into the TARDIS and they're going to leave. He's like, well, Pompeii is going to happen and we can't do anything to change it, so we may as well just leave. And they're heading off. And then Donna, Donna Noble. Oh, Donna Noble. Love you, Catherine. Love you, Catherine. And, um, and she's, she's just begging him she's like you know you can just save somebody just save somebody you know say you don't don't stop thinking about like oh my gosh i have to do something big and impacting the entire town or it's not worth it like he was in despair he was just like despairing and he's gonna leave yeah she's like just save somebody and so they go back and they save that family that they met in pompeii and um so yeah themes of hope for humanity despite the inevitable so it's like even when there's an inevitable evil, an inevitable destruction that's going to happen, like like the eruption of Pompeii, you can still you can still do something good. Yeah. Inside of that. Um, let's see. What are some other examples of a uh, fixed point? Well 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 again, you can go back to the Steins Gate thing where like like the fixed point was Always, no matter what, even if you delay it by like a day or a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. this person was fated mm-hmm. to die. Mm-hmm. Whether it be via gunshot, accident, mm-hmm. whichever, the person mm-hmm. was going to die. Mm-hmm. That was a fixed point. That was the inevitability that came about in, mm-hmm. especially in the second half of Steins Gate's story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, um, I forgot her name again. Mayuri? Ta-da-da! Mayuri. Where, yeah, she heard, her. yeah, her dying. But the fixed point was a fixed point in the in the timeline that they were in. Mm-hmm. So if you can undo the timeline, you can get back to a single continuum and then everything makes sense. Right, but but then again, like, again, Steins Gate is like a weird, like, rule on that because, mm-hmm. like, with multiple timelines, there are so many other different rules that apply to that as opposed to, like, where mm-hmm. you have something like, like Doctor Who where... Everything basically is like a straight time time stream, Mm -hmm. well, minus some of the wibbly wobbly stuff. But I mean, like neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, um, the Back to the Future thing, where like a fixed point would probably be like Marty's um, uh, parents meeting. Yeah. Like he changed the situation of how they Mm -hmm. met. Yeah. But I -hmm. mean. Yeah. Yeah, he's just able to sort of steer it back into the, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and and he basically just changed how they met. How they met, yep. Smooth yep. move, Calvin! <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of not so much um, changing the what, but changing the how. Mm-hmm. I guess, yeah. Which, that is cool. Okay. I think, oh, um, fixed points, another example of a fixed point, um, a th- fixed point time travel type is uh, Terminator, oh. which I've never actually seen, but I'm going to read this that I, this note that I took to you, and you'll probably understand it. Skynet is a fixed point, as is John mm-hmm. Connor. Mm-hmm. They keep going back in time, hell-bent on destroying each other to no effect, because they're both fixed points. They're, they, and that basically comes about in like uh, um, both the second and third Terminator, because Judgment Day was like a big thing mm-hmm. that took place for that. Yeah. They thought at the end of Terminator 2, it ter- Judgment Day was supposed to happen in Terminator 2, but they averted it. Mm-hmm. They didn't get, get rid of it entirely, but they averted it. Yeah. And 
Um, even though Terminator Three is not a great film, like the tw- like the the finale at the end, the realization that Judgment Day is going to happen, mm-hmm. no matter what, that they just follow through with it. It's like, yikes! <laughs> yeah. God, I want to watch. I want to watch Terminator Two again. That's like one of the best best movies ever made. <laughs> I haven't seen any of them. I should. We, we we need to start a new series. Hannah's movie reactions. Hannah's movie reactions. Yep, yep. Inepticon. Hannah's movie reactions. <sighs> How yep. often should we do Inepticon? Like once a month, play a game. We'll f- we'll figure it out. Cool, cool, cool. We'll get. That's we'll... a that's a new year kind of problem. New new year new year new us. New year new us. <laughs> um, okay. Then the last one is infinite alternates. Characters can change everything. So this is actually the most popular type because it has the most possibilities. Oh, yeah. Um, it's also the weirdest. So Sorry, I'm just going to grab a donut. Um, nothing is certain. You can change the future. You can create a new reality. Basically, okay, what it means is that your actions have consequences. Yep. Um, so... There are entire Twilight Zone episodes based around this one concept of time mm-hmm. travel. Yeah. So, the um, the Star Trek reboot that made in 2009. Oh, yeah. Events following the Romulan and Spock jumping back in time cause a whole new timeline. Yep. Um, Thanks, JJ. Yep. Cause a whole new timeline, which helps movie makers to not have to do things with continuity anymore. Like, that's... Uh, I mean, it's better than doing, like, a hardcore all-set reboot. You just put it in, like, do the reboot, like, in terms of, like, the rules of the universe. Mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, it gave us Simon Pegg as uh, Scotty, which I'm totally all about. Oh, man. Love him. Okay. Here's a movie. Have you ever seen Looper? Yes. Okay. This movie, there's, there's so much that's weird about it, and, like, the time, like, the way they use the time travel, um... Is kind of weird, but I actually really like this movie. So basically what it's about is... Um, it's about people, like hitmen, in the present, who are hired to kill people from the future. So the mark that they want killed in the future sends them back in time, 30 years, to be executed by a hitman in the present. And the hitman gets rid of the body. Um, so basically they just disappear people from the future. Hmm. So they're never found. But 30 years ago, they were buried in an unmarked grave as a John Doe because no one knows who they were right. in, the, in the past. Um, <laughs> so, um, it's, so it's cool. Like, these hitmen, they do that. And, and then what happens is the, the hitman, uh, sh- like, like, who is it? It's jo- uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, plays one of these hitmen in the past who he basically shows up in this cornfield and he puts a tarp down on this spot and then a person will get like like time time zapped back to this spot in this cornfield all tied up and blindfolded and everything and he'll just shoot them with a blunderbuss and then he wraps them up in the tarp and gets rid of them Hmm. and there's always like a couple of bars of gold on the body and part of the contract is that you get like you do that, and then eventually you will get a, you'll get somebody sent to you who, after you shoot them, you take a look in their backpack that they're wearing, and they've got, like, tons of gold, like, 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 a hundred times more gold than you usually get. And that is the sign that your, your contract is done, you don't have to do any more of this, because that person you just shot is you from the future. <laughs> so... <laughs> so that's how they that's how they get rid of these people who are doing this job. So then it's like, well, you got about 30 years to live your life and do whatever. And then we'll come and get you and send you back in the past and you'll shoot yourself. Aye, aye. <laughs> so so that's kind of where it um comes from and the um the sto- in the the like inciting incident in this story is that Joseph Gordon-Levitt gets the guy sent to him. Uh-huh. And Something happens where the person, the, the him from the future, ends up not getting killed by him. And it's about the timeline that results from him surviving his own execution of himself. Hmm. 
and his future self is played by by, by Bruce Willis. <laughs> that's that's that. I, I I never I I don't I don't understand. I don't see the metamorphosis of George and Gordon Levitt no. turning into Bruce Willis. No, it was not the best part of the movie. But um, so he ended up not killing himself. <laughs> Shocker. And um, it's um, it's about. They they are trying to track down this. It's kind of like a kill Hitler kind of thing, uh, where uh, Bruce Willis has come back in time, to, well, he was sent back in time to be killed. But his plan was okay. I am planning on when I get sent back in time, I have something that I'm going to do, and it'll help me survive. Um, so he does that. I don't remember what it was, but he survives. And then him and his past self go looking around for this kid who's going to grow up to be kind of like this universe's version of Hitler. Hmm. So they're trying to find, like, this six-year-old kid that they're going to just kill because then um, this universe, Hitler, won't exist and then this dystopia that has occurred in Bruce Willis's time won't happen. Uh, the, t- the, to- <laughs> the Tom Baker, could you then kill that child kind mm-hmm. of speech. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Um, and the way that they do sort of, um, changing stuff in time is a little bit like, you know, in Back to the Future, where the photograph starts to change, where the, the, um, oldest sibling starts to melt first and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of like that, except it's your actual body. Oh, <laughs> so, that's right. So, like, things... Um, future things, like future ch- things change as a result of past events while we watch. Like, the, there's this guy whose past self is, like, his um, his future self escaped execution, some other guy. And they caught his future self, or not his future self, why the, ah! they caught his past self, his younger self, and they're holding him for ransom to get the future self to surrender. So they start, like, to get the guy to go where they want him to go, they, like, carve an address into the younger self's arm. And as he's walking along, he, like, notices it. And he's like, there's an address in my arm. And it's, like, scarred in there and stuff. But it's like, when you think about it, that would have been there for 30 years and he's only just noticing it now. But we see it appear in real time for him, which is kind of weird. Um, they start cutting messages into his skin. They start cutting off his fingers. Um... So the guy's, like, climbing a fence, and then suddenly he doesn't have fingers and he can't climb anymore. And then he's just, like, collapses on the ground and he has no legs anymore. <laughs> like it's just That's really incredible. Weird. I know, yeah. It God, seems to so happen long. spontaneously to the future guy, even though he would have lived with these injuries for years. <laughs> so it's just kind of, like, stuff like that. Just ridiculous. Or you sort of think, okay, yeah, if something changes in the past... The time has to pass between. It's not just a sudden, spontaneous thing where you can have your legs cut off, mm-hmm. live your life with your legs, and then 30 years later, suddenly, spontaneously have your legs just, like, whoop, disappear. <laughs> it's very strange. I mean, it was, a, it was a harrowing scene, you know, but... True. Actually, another movie that comes to mind, like, when it comes to, like, this, like, method of free form, like, mm-hmm. you can always change things, but you have to serve the consequences... Have you ever seen or saw um, the butterfly effect? Yeah. Well, no, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Okay. So, yeah, th- this basically reminds me of um, all this one. So, um, Ashton Kutcher's character um, uh, basically has this ability, if he reads um, or views a video or pictures of, like, his um, memories from his past, um, mm-hmm. he's able. his consciousness travels back to that time in his past, where he hmm. rel- and it's only for a short time he can change like certain things and he ends up changing the timeline into like t- a totally different reality like he's like he's a college pl- like he can be be a college playboy with like the love of his with the love of his life but with so many other dark secrets he ends mm-hmm. up as a um uh, um like a paraplegic with no arms no legs he's not really able to do anything he en- ends up in a mental mental institution um, and then, Weird. and then in a dark, uh, turn of events in, um, uh, one of the alternate endings, um, he's not born at all. Huh. Okay. I don't, I don't even know if I want to tell you that particular alternate ending, because it's just like, oh. Interesting. So he can't, 
So he can't change anything if he wasn't born at all because he changed it so that he that, that that was basically his final like thing because he's like it came to the point where it's like it this would all be better if like if I wasn't even born so he basically mm-hmm. his consciousness has gone back in time to I don't even know if I want to say this um basically he's basically he's a, he's he's about to be birthed in the womb okay and he kills himself by strangling himself with the umbilical cord <gasps> Yeah. It's just like, what? How? How? Mama! <laughs> just kill you. I don't want to die. That, oh, that, oh. Sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. Yeah. He should have gone back and made sure his parents didn't meet or at least didn't like. Well, well, well. the, the constant was always him and, like, his childhood's, like, love. Mm-hmm. And, um... Any future involving her would always spell disaster for himself and everyone else they know. Mm-hmm. So in the theatr- in the original version, he basically, um, when, in their first meeting, he basically um, uh, scared her off to the point where she did not want to have anything to do with him. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. There's something... Like there, like, there was more to it than that, I think, but it, mm-hmm. that's just, like, the thing that r- reminds me most. That and the, what the... F- what the hell alternate ending that was that umbilical cord scene i'm like <laughs> why like, am i in health class now it's like, and now we see the embryo in the womb strangling itself with its own umbilical cord what <laughs> um professor why are we explaining this professor <laughs> professor why is this a thing <laughs> it's a dangerous world inside your mother's womb there's so many so many hazards my son um <laughs> I I I don't I don't, I don't think I want to attend this university anymore. No. Let's see. I have a whole list of like time travel tropes here. Like the alternate self is an extra version of an existing person, sometimes caused by time travel. Which, yeah, like you going back in time and meeting yourself. And there's sort of a debate about whether or not this is possible. If it's possible for you to be in the same room with yourself, like, can matter occupy the same place at the same time? Which, like, I think that you could talk to yourself if you went back in time, because you're never going to be occupying the same exact place. Like, your presence in the past might unbalance sort of like, I don't know, the the uh, carbon footprint or something. Like, some sort of right. thing having to do with the world that would just incrementally tiny 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 increments would change it but like yeah well i mean doctor who got away with it many times mm-hmm. by having multiple doctor stories but i mean yeah i mean other time travel stories seem to pull this off like as well like we said the mm-hmm. finale to steins gate has like two uh mm-hmm. has two um okabes like in the exact same area at the exact same time yep. they just don't meet up yeah yeah they just gotta stay up apart well yeah because if one of them knows about the time travel stop, and one of them doesn't know about it yet, that would screw up the timeline if they were to meet. So you gotta remember when you met the person and then go and meet them in the past at that time you remember having met yourself. Right. <laughs> I could talk about this all day. Or like, what is it? The Doctor Who episode, uh, Blink? Oh, God. That's just a giant loop. Like, where did the files come from that she gave to... Wait a minute. Like she, she got, yeah. Like she, like she got all these files from the doctor about the angels and everything, and then those files she gives to the doctor so that he can give them to her later, so that she can give them to him, so that he can give them to her. So it goes around in this big circle. I believe that's where a ver- did, like where did it come from? Where did it, where did the information? Originate? I believe that's called the bootstrap paradox. The bootstrap paradox. I wonder if it's here in my. Um, well, well, it's also, well, also like another version of the bootstrap bootstrap paradox that bootstraps, was actually bootstraps. the bootstraps, 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 bootstraps. <laughs> that was also explained in um actually in the show by Peter Capaldi was mm-hmm. um uh, the uh, the time traveler Beethoven story. Oh, so, Beethoven, yeah. yeah. Say say a, say a man loved the works of Ludwig van Beethoven, and he has all of all of his sheet music, all of his symphonies, his mm-hmm. concertos. And he wants to go back in time to meet his I- idol. But unfortunately, as he looks around, nobody knows where, who Beethoven is. Not even his family. He literally did not exist. 
Mm-hmm. But he remem- but he remembers that he brought all of his Beethoven um, music, the sheet music, everything with him in order to have Beethoven sign them. That's how he phrased it. But then he releases all of the music under Beethoven's name. He gets them published. He becomes Beethoven. <laughs> but, the, but the true question is, who put the notes in there in the first place? Yeah. Who wrote Beethoven's fifth? Mm-hmm. Bootstrap. The bootstrap paradox. The, it's the bootstrap paradox. Go- <laughs> Google it. <laughs> the bootstrap paradox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Bootstrap. Why is it called the bootstrap paradox? I do not remember. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me. Yeah. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do as 12th Dr. Peter Capaldi says and Google it. Put it into Goodle, like in Steins Gate. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a couple of these um, a couple of these tropes because they're kind of fun. Um, okay, alternate timeline and alternate continuity where both continuities share a past. Anachronism stew. A story takes place in a specific time period taking place in a specific time period features technology, cultural references that are either out of date or don't exist. This could be the result of time travelers introducing something from another era. Um, let's see. Okay, here it is. The bootstrap paradox is derived from the expression to pull oneself over a fence by one's bootstraps, which indicates performing an impossible or ludicrous task. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay, impossible it, or ludicrous task. It goes It goes by other names as well, such as a uh, casual loop. Oh, yeah. Casual loop. I think that's on my list, actually. It is a loop. Oh, casual time travel. Time travel is a normal hobby or occupation. Doctor! <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mental time travel. It's like what happened in Steins Gate, where you're just your consciousness goes back in time and not oh, your body. I feel like there was an old still frame uh, movie where that was how mm-hmm. time travel was done as well. Yeah. They just send one's consciousness through time as opposed to the physical body itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't remember though. I that's the one that I can think I, of. I don't Steins Gate. There was actually a um, uh, there was actually a very um, uh, popular comic story related to that kind of time travel as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was from Marvel Comics X Men's uh, Days of Future Past. Okay, actually, I remember that. Where he, yeah, his consciousness goes back. It wasn't actually Wolverine in the comics. That was basically for the movies. It was actually mm-hmm. Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat. That sent her consciousness through time hmm. for that. So that, so yeah, that is a form of uh, time travel. Through that, in a popular sense, like that. Yeah. Also, oh, cool. also, be, also, because I really love X Men. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Oh man. Oh, there's so many. There's so many like weird things you can do with time. Like. Oh. I'm trying to think of some other other examples of stories with time travel in them. Well, I mean, you've got your obvious, like, Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Back to the Future is definitely one of these um, um, infinite alternates kind of thing. Um. We're, oh, um, you ever seen The Time Traveler's Wife? Uh-uh. That, was a, that, one, that one was another weird one, but... <laughs> We're basically seeing, like, this woman's, like, uh, history growing up with uh, this time traveler that he basically has no control over how far or when, at what time he time travels. Oh, he travels. just disappears. Is this the one where he just randomly, whenever he time travels, he shows up, like, naked in the middle of some field? I believe so, yes. It's been ages since I've seen it. Uh-huh. Awkward. <laughs> There's another movie that I am trying to remember... Primer? Never saw that. Yeah. That's a weird one. I need to watch it again because I was really young when I watched it and I did not understand it. 
<laughs> what you looking for? Okay, here it is. Um, another um, uh, film that um, represents time travel. It's actually one of my favorite anime films. Uh, the Girl Who Leapt Through Time. Oh, right. Okay. One of, one of my um, uh, favorite ones. She basically uh, keeps reliving this uh, day over and over again to um, different uh, effect, to different like um, effects, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, so different things. Happen. Kind of like Groundhog's Day. Yep, kind Almost. kind of, and and her powers have, uh, negatively affect others as well. Mm-mm. So yeah, okay, there's that. Huh. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities with time travel. Definitely, it's a really fun concept. It's it's like one of the most grandfathered and celebrated MacGuffins, I think, in science fiction. Mm-hmm. Because you can do so much with it. Oh yeah. The possibilities are endless, but at the same time, like. We've seen all of them played out, like, to humorous effect and to just, oh my god, they're really going like this kind of effect. <laughs> but if used effectively, time travel works. Yep. <laughs> it actually works. Is there anything that we haven't mentioned yet that we should? Because it's so obviously, like, classic time travel and we haven't covered it. Let's see. We got through Doctor Who. Yep. We got through uh, Back to the Future. Yep. We've got through um, different anime stuff. We got through Steins Gate. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of any other time travel stuff. We did the Star Trek reboot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there were too many time travel stories. There's too many. There's far, far too many. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, no, that would. Well, I mean, some episodes of Futurama where they time travel. Oh, yeah. But th- but those ones are always, like, so insanely what? <laughs> Involving, like, black holes and only able to go forward and the universe resets with a big bang each time. Mm-hmm. It's like, huh? There's so much. <laughs> Sometimes there's too much. Yeah. Brain. Can't. Here's one. Timey wimey ball. The rules of time travel are inconsistent. Yeah, they are. They truly are. It's only oh. up to the writers. The time travels traveler's wife unstuck in time. Somebody who randomly time travels has no idea when and sometimes where they'll end up. <laughs> yeah, I, it's completely it's completely on. Uh, it's like completely unpredictable. That that would be that would be terrifying, mm-hmm. absolutely terrifying. Having the ability to time travel, but you can't control it. When <laughs> when you'll time travel, or how far, or how back you'll go. Yeah, that's kind of insane. <laughs> they do some time travel in um, Supernatural as well, right? Like um, they at some point, at one point, they like the brothers like meet their own grandfather because he the reason that he disappeared when their dad was a kid was because he worked for this secret organization and he went on a trip to the future and never came back oh man (laughs) oh supernatural supernatural Mm -hmm. you had a long run yep yep very long run yep but still haven't seen the end of it i don't have cable, so I wait for it to all come out on Netflix. I, I, I look at it. Th- I look at it this way. It, I, I, I celebrated its passing, its finale the other day with my friend Aaron on stream mm-hmm. by quoting one of my favorite Castiel moments: the time that he was watching porn in front of everybody. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. If the pizza man really did love his this babysitter, why does he continuously smack her rear? <laughs> Unless she's done something wrong. Cass, are you watching porn? It was just sitting right there. <laughs> you don't watch porn in front of other people. And you don't simply don't talk about it out loud. <laughs> I'm just like I'm like th- I'm like this was made for public this was made for public television, ladies he, and gentlemen. He definitely mentions the pizza man porn a couple of times. <laughs> he does. Except, wait. Wait. Should we order a pizza? What then? Would I have to smack your rear? <laughs> God dang it, Cass. 
I think one of my one of my favorites is um when um uh, Sam decides that they're going to uh, like test something out on on him be on himself because like of circumstances he has like some sort of um, angelic residue left in his soul from being possessed by an angel and he's like well well at least now we have a guinea pig and then Cass like looks over he's like you guys have a guinea pig where he's like no me I'm the guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Cass. He's like, you've had a guinea pig for 11 years and didn't tell me? <laughs> God, God dang it. <sighs> ah, urination. I understand. <laughs> you know, if we, if, we, if we could travel back in time and just say Supernatural could go on longer, would we? No. No, it's, gone it's, on long it's enough. good. It's good. But if I could go back in time to... If I could turn back time. But if I could go back in time to ensure that more... Car more shows that deserved more um, episodes, got more episodes, I would. Spectacular Spider-Man and Firefly are at the top of that list. Oh, Firefly. We still need to talk about Firefly at some point. I need to rewatch through all the I'd have to understand. watch it again, too. One where's, of these days. Where's my topic list? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just expecting her to pull out a scroll that, is, that will just reach oh. all the way down... The and thus, no. the scroll of list of topics by Hannah Kubiak. Top I, of the list, Firefly. I wish that I had a long list, but I I don't. I have a small list. Christmas idea. We need to give Hannah a scroll. A scroll? A scroll. <laughs> where, where you can just hold... hold <laughs> Gesundheit. Thank you. Where you can just hold it open mm -hmm. like the messengers of old. <laughs> And read in a very high and posh accent, with all of the decree behind you, and as if you were announcing a lord or lady. I took the holy hand grenade, and not the one shall thou count, neither count thou two, excepting that thou then, then proceed to three. I would, I would die, I would die to get that scroll. And the orangutans, and the, and the breakfast cereals, and. The, Skip a bit, brother. Oh. <laughs> I think we're done here. <laughs> I'd like to go back in time just to see just to see them making that movie. Oh man, that would be great. Absolutely. I this? I think I, yeah, I think we pretty much uh, milked this time travel cow as much as we can. Yep. But wait, if we milk a cow that is able to randomly time travel, does the cow take the milk with him after we've milked him? Them. Her. You can't milk a male cow. Don't yeah. Don't. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not, I'll, I'll, I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? I'll show myself to the corner. <laughs> Good night, everybody! Good night! Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the General Geekery Podcast, all about the wonders of time travel. What are some of your favorite time travel stories? Let us know wherever we can be found on social media we're at general geekery on instagram and at gen geek podcast on facebook and twitter you guys can also uh, connect with us on our patreon at patreon.com forward slash general geekery we uh, have plenty of uh, content there you can get early access to all of our episodes a few days before they go live on all of our social on all of our uh, um, streaming platforms as well as um, interacting uh, with us, the creators, um, uh, influence what um, topics we can talk about. And depending on what tier you have, you can even uh, get some exclusive artwork by our artiste extraordinaire, Hannah Kubiak. Mm -hmm. And you also can check us out wherever we can be found, where podcasts can be listened to. We are on Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts. And if you don't have access to those streaming platforms, we are also available on my personal YouTube channel, Anime Rev Productions. That is youtube.com forward slash Anime Rev Productions. Hannah, where can they check you out at? Well, you can find me rolling dice with my party every Monday at 7.30 Central um, on twitch.tv slash Loaded Dice Adventures, where our uh, party of Milwaukee-based RPG enthusiasts are discovering the mysteries behind the world of Avenaria. I play Petra, the Dragonborn Ranger Rogue, and it is a blast. Uh, you can also find me on my other podcast that I do with my mom called Splanknicks, where we discuss art, entertainment, and tabletop gaming from the perspective of two different generations. 
And if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Pythian Legume. Excellent. And you guys can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash Ryuzaki MK7. I do a bunch of different um, uh, games. Most of them are RPG based, but I also interact with my chat room a lot. We have a lot of fun. Everybody um, always uh, takes time poking fun at me. Apparently the recent trend is um, my chat room wants to lewd me. I don't understand. But I, I, I don't understand. Apparently people have fallen in love with my voice. I do, I do a lot of voice acting stuff, and there are some, some of them where people are just like, I want to make love to that voice. What? He help me, Hannah. Please help me. I'm sorry. You got yourself into this problem. Uh, I can't get you out. Okay. Just don't tell them where you live. That's a good point. That's twitch.tv forward slash Ryuzaki MK7, and you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ryuzaki MK7. So, that's pretty much it, guys. This has been episode 58 of the General Geekly Podcast, all about time travel. Our final episode in the original recording space. When will we, when will we have the new a new recording space available? Only time will tell. Mm -hmm. Now, if only I could fast forward to the future, like that mm -hmm. freaking remote from the Adam Sandler movie, Click. Oh, gosh. We, yeah, we'll be recording in some sort of strange, strange in-between place. Some kind of pocket dimension where we record between studios. The garbage can at Starbucks? Yes. Oh, God. No. <laughs> Please, no. But That is one of the many pocket dimensions that we could choose. We, we, do, we don't venture into that space. But until next time, guys, for Hannah, I'm Donald. Until next time, guys, um, if you are traveling through the time vortex, uh... Travel in a capsule. Don't travel without a capsule, because according to David Tennant, that's a killer. But, if you are traveling through time, space, relative dimensions, parallel world lines, whichever, always remember to keep your geek on. Always. Clink, clink. Clink, clink. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's do the time warp again! <laughs> I had to throw it in there.